Hi again, uh, here we are to continue talking about uh, JavaScript and uh, we're going to continue working on the shopping cart. And uh, you know, in the last video, we got our shopping cart um, and you know, it had five items in it. And you know, but we had this apple and we added a second apple. And you know, instead of increasing the quantity, it just added a second item with a quantity of one. So, what we want to do is we want to make sure anytime you add something with the same name, that it just bumps up the quantity rather than um, you know adding a whole new item, right? So so far um, our code looks like this. I kind of reformatted mine a little bit here, um, and uh, you know if we look at the add item method um, right now, it's going to always add a new item because that's just what the what we have here. We have two lines of code. The first line makes an item. And the second item, or the second line, pushes that item into the cart. So what we'd like to do though is we'd like to check the cart first and look to see if the current name matches the name that's a name that's in the cart. So um, remember, when you call add item, the value here, the first value, is put into this variable here. So the the value apple is inside name, and then at that time price is 99 cents. And then the second time we call the function name is orange and this 129 goes into price, right? So what we need to do is we need to loop through the cart and check to see if an item with that name already exists. So let's do this. Let's do for let um, I equal uh, zero, and let's just do our loop again. I is less than cart dot length semicolon, and then I plus equals one. Okay, and what I'd like to do here is I'd like to use an if statement to you know do a comparison, and an if statement lets us it's a conditional or a flow control element, and it basically lets us our flow control structure right. It lets us uh, do a comparison, and if that comparison is true, then to run some code, and if the comparison is is false, then not to run that code right. So uh, it looks a lot like an if statement or a, a for loop. I mean, so I'll write it like this. I'll say if uh, parentheses and curly brackets. So that's the same format as the for statement, right? If parentheses, curly brackets, and then this this curly brackets is a block of code that will be run if the statement within the parentheses is true. Okay. So what we want to do is I want to check and see if cart the item i in cart, right? So that would be the object. But remember, the object has a name, so I'm going to say item dot name and if that item is equal to the name that you passed into the function so if you're adding a new item to the cart like let's say you add you know the second apple down here right and uh, that'll be in the name here I'm gonna loop through every item in my cart oops I missed the G there let me fix that right length right um, I'll loop through every item in my cart and if the name of that item, well, or I should say, if the object at index i and the name of that object is equal to the name that you passed in here, then we'll run the code inside this block here. Okay. So quickly, the uh, the three equal signs is comparison, and the, uh, in JavaScript, the single equal sign is an assignment. So we'd be setting the name in this case. Two equal signs is comparison, but it's kind of a loose comparison. And three equal signs is like a tight comparison. It means not only are these things the same value, they're also the same type. And we'll talk more about that later, but essentially, you know, what this is saying is that if name over here in the object is a string and this is a string, then if they're two strings and they have the same value, like they're spelled A P P L E, right? Then, then that's a match. Okay. So usually in JavaScript we want to use the triple equal because that's kind of safer. Okay. Because not only are you matching um, the value, you're also matching the type. Okay. So if this happens, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to say um, cart bracket i or the item at 
at in the object at index i, its quantity, and what we'll do is we'll add one to that quantity. So we'll say cart i dot quantity plus equals one. So that means add one to the value on the left side. Okay. And this is not quite right here. Let's run this and see what happens, right? So if I refresh the browser here, you can see I've got five items in the cart. And the first apple now shows two as the quantity, which is perfect. But if I go down the list, you can see that this apple here is still being added, right? And that comes from the two lines of code here, right? So what we need to do is we need to make sure that if this if statement is run, if we're going through the for loop and we do this line right here, we need to stop running code here. We need to stop here. Okay, and if you think about it, you know, if we don't want to have duplicate items in the cart, if we run into one item, then, you know, there shouldn't be another one, right? Because there won't be any duplicates, right? And if we don't do this, if, the, if we don't find any items with this name where the name matches, then we do want to do the code at the bottom. So to stop a function from running, you can use the return keyword. Okay, so if you're inside a function, even if you're inside a for loop in a function, if you call return, your for loop ends and then the function ends itself and you stop at this point and don't continue down to the bottom. Okay, so it won't do these two lines of code and it won't even like if, if we um, are looping through four items and you just get to item number two in the shopping cart and it turns out that the names match, then we'll increase the quantity of item two and then return and that stops the for loop and we don't even loop through items three and four, okay? And then we don't do the code down here either. Let's give that a try. So I'll save it and then I'll refresh and, uh, and refresh the browser here. And yet now you can see that I've got apple with a quantity of two and then orange and opinion and frisbee, right? So that's working pretty good. Um, you know, I do kind of have a problem though because I have four items here but the, um, the, the apple actually has a quantity of two, but it only says four, right? So it really should say five because instead of counting the items here, the length, it should count the, the quantities and, and sum them up, right? And show me the total of the quantity here, okay? So I could leave, let's leave that for you as a stretch challenge or a challenge that you can try. Why don't you stop the video now and give yourself a chance to do it. Really, it's got to happen here inside show items, okay? So give that a try and then you can come back to the video and then I'll, I'll go through some answers. The other thing too that we want to do is we want to sum up the total of the prices here, okay? So we'll do that also. So give it a try and then come back. Okay, so let's uh, let's continue here with the with the the answer. So, um, and there's a few ways to do this. Uh, I'm going to use a for loop again because that's what we've been talking about. So I'll I'll go into show items and I'll um, I'll type four right here, and let's do our loop again. So I'll say four let i equal a zero. Let's loop while i is less than uh, you know cart dot um, length and uh, say i plus equals one. And what we'll need to do though is we'll need to have a variable outside of the for loop that we use to, to sum up the quantity. So this is kind of a key thing, right? And this is a, a concept called the scope is involved with this, right? So I'm gonna say let quantity equal to zero. So let's assume we have zero items in the cart and then we'll loop through all the items in the cart. And with each item, we'll add the quantity of that item to our total quantity here. Okay? So I'll say a cart a bracket a i dot a quantity. Okay? So here's our loop. We started with a quantity of zero outside the for loop. Okay? And uh, it's important that it's outside. If we, if we declare it here inside the loop, what will happen is scope will say that every time we go to the top of the for loop, a new quantity will be initialized and set to zero. But we don't want that. We want to keep a running total. So I got to put it outside the for loop and then add 
the quantity or you know sum the quantity here and then when we're done where it says length right here we can just replace that with the quantity or the total quantity right let's give that a try and uh, see what happens right hey so now I've got five items in the cart let's add another item what if I put um, another apple here and what if I add another orange at the bottom there right and then I'll refresh and you can see here it says um, seven items in the cart and I've got three apples uh, two oranges an opinion and a frisbee okay so that's looking pretty good so um, here's another challenge for you so looking at what we have here let's think of a way that we can um, add up the the total price of all the items okay so what this will be is we'll have to have a running total for price or like total let's call it total right so the total price we'll have to have a running total for that we'll have to loop through each item in the cart and get the price of that item multiply it by the quantity of the item and then add that to the total okay so for each item in the cart right we'll have to um, get the price and the quantity multiply these two add it to the total and then print the total at the end of the for loop or after the for loop is over okay so you can give that a try on your own and then I'll walk through it here and then we'll talk about um, some more stuff in the next video on how we can like improve on the code here okay okay hey did you give that a try did it how, how'd you do um, let's go over the solution that that I'm gonna try here right um, I'm actually gonna write this we could do it inside this for loop here and that would be okay um, nothing wrong with that but later what I'd like to do is move this this sum or total function or move this total code out of or move the code that finds the total out of this show items thing and make it its own function so we can call it from anywhere so I'm gonna actually write it separately here and I'll put it at the end like this and uh, what I'll do is I'll write a for loop I'll declare a variable uh, I'm just getting a lot of mileage out of I here right and uh, let's uh, loop while I is less than cart dot uh, length and let's say I plus equals one okay and before we start the loop I'm gonna declare a variable called total so this is where we'll store the running total okay and what we'll do is we'll say total plus equals some value right so we'll add the value here right so let's calculate the value that we're gonna add on the right side of the plus equals right so it's gonna be cart um, item I dot um, price times cart uh, bracket I dot uh, quantity okay so here we'll get the uh, the price of an item the quantity of an item we'll multiply them together and add that to the total and then after the for loop we can um, console log the total and let's use the back ticks again and say uh, total in cart and then we'll do dollar sign that that'll be the dollar sign that we print and then this dollar sign here after the with the curly braces following it is the one that we'll use to print the the, the variable that we've that we've um, created right okay great so let's save that and refresh and you can see here we've got um, seven items in our cart Apple we got three of them 99 cents each uh, oranges we got two for a dollar 29 each uh, we've got one opinion for two cents and a frisbee for 9.92 and the total is fifteen dollars 89 or 48.99999 cents right okay so this is kind of a funny thing in JavaScript um, let's talk about that um, maybe this video is getting pretty long I don't know but but we'll, we'll we'll cover this okay and this is actually perfectly valid 
right? And it's the accurate number, even though it seems kind of funny to our sense of what numbers should be, right? Um, the reason that we get this is something to do with the way the computer keeps track of numbers in base 2, where we're actually converting them to base 10, right? So we'll talk about how to deal with this in the next video. It's, it's not hard, right? Um, but anyway, thanks for watching, and um, I hope this is working out for you, and we'll continue with this, and we're almost to the point where we can start working on the interface.